Hey guys, this is Max from Center Music House. We're so happy to be offering this free guitar class in partnership with the Framingham Public Library. At Center Music House, it's our goal to help you succeed in your musical journey. So if there's anything that we can do to help you out, please just let us know. Visit centermusic.com forward slash read where you can get access to promo codes and deals that we're offering on a weekly basis in conjunction with these videos. Also, be sure to register for the class so you can get the weekly lesson plans. And finally, don't forget to tune in to the live Q&A sessions we're doing on Library's YouTube channel. Those are happening each Saturday night at 6.30 p.m. for as long as we're releasing these videos. All right, let's get on to the class. Hello everyone, my name is Richards, and I'm a teacher at Central Music House. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Originally I come from Latvia, which is a small country up in Northeast Europe. But then, a couple of years ago, I moved to Boston to study at Berklee College of Music. Now, I've been playing to close to 10 years, and I've toured and gigged and, and recorded both live and in studio, and I've been teaching for the past few years as well. Now, I've really been enjoying my teaching career, so I'm very excited to bring you this introductory course on how to play the guitar. Over the next couple of weeks, we're going to take a look at a few simple and not so simple chords. We're going to talk about how to strum, how to finger pick, and also we're going to learn a few songs. So let's get started. First, let's briefly go over the different parts of the guitar. The biggest one, of course, is the body of the guitar, which is all of this over here. Now on the body, we have the bridge, which holds the strings down, and as we go along the strings, we're going to come up to the sound hole. Now the sound hole makes the sound louder, it resonates the sound. If you happen to have an electric guitar, the sound hole will be replaced by pickups. This whole part over here is the neck of the guitar. That's a, that's a pretty big, that's a pretty long neck. On the neck, where you see people put their fingers on, that's what we call the fretboard or the fingerboard. And to make it easier for us to play notes on the fretboard, we have these metal bars, which we call frets. Now, on the other side of the neck, we're going to see the nut. The nut acts kind of the same as the bridge on the body. It holds the strings up only on the other side of the neck. It also aligns the strings nicely, so each of our fingers have a place on each of the strings. This whole part over here is the headstock. And on the headstock, we have tuning pegs, which help us keep our guitar in tune. Now, before we start tinkering with the guitar itself, we also have to talk a little bit about how to hold the guitar. There's a couple of different ways you can do it, but the most popular one, as you might have guessed already, is just like this, on your right leg. You also will notice that the guitar has a nice little curve here in the body, which will allow it to nicely fit on your leg. Now, your right arm is going to go over the body of the guitar, and if you have a big, bigger body guitar like this, a bigger body acoustic like this, um, your hand is going to rest on the body a little bit above the elbow, probably. So that way you can just rest it on the body, keep your shoulder and everything relaxed, and your forearm and hand can just do its own thing here. Now, if you have a smaller body guitar, you might have to experiment and play around with where to position your arm. The main thing to remember is that you want your forearm and your hand and wrist to move freely. Now your left hand, well, let's start with just shaking it out. Just really shake it out. You don't want any tenseness in it. You want it to be completely relaxed. Now, if you hold your left arm up like this, you'll notice there's a nice little curve here. The, the, the fingers are curling up naturally. Now, have this curl in the back of your mind. We're gonna to return to that in a second. What you want to do is you want to bring your relaxed left hand up to the guitar neck and put your thumb on the back of the neck. It doesn't have to be a fixed position. It can just kind of move around and hang around there on the back of the neck. Just remember, keep it relaxed and no tension. Now, once you have positioned your thumb there, Still keep your fingers and your hand loose and remember that curl that we talked about, that natural curl that occurs in your left hand fingers. So you want to bring that to the guitar as if, if we were holding the guitar like this, 
you should imagine that your fingers are coming on the fretboard from above. Now we're going to talk about this a lot more later on, but for now, that's the basis of how you should be holding a guitar. Now, if you happen to have a classical guitar, you can play it on your left leg, which is what we would call the classical position. Posture-wise, the classical position is much nicer for your back. You can keep your shoulders nice and relaxed here, and uh, it also grants you better reach for your fingers on the fretboard. The only problem with the classical position is that you need extra props to do it. As you see, I'm using a wooden box to lift up my leg so I can lift up the guitar to hold it more neatly and closer and give my fingers and my hands more reach. You can also use a professional footstool, they're not too expensive. Or if you don't want to use a footstool, by far the ergonomically most nicest way is you can buy certain supports or guitar pillows that you can put on your leg and then you can hold both of your legs flat on the ground and the pillow or the guitar support will raise the guitar up for you like this. If you have an electric guitar, you can play around and experiment with both of the positions, both the right leg one and the left leg one. Electric guitar bodies are usually slimmer and smaller, so there's more space to experiment and play around how to position it in your lap. You can also choose to play while you stand. In that case, you need to get a strap. To play the guitar, it's very important to have it in tune. If your guitar isn't in tune, the sound is going to be very blurry and unclear, especially for the audience, and probably for you yourself too. To tune a guitar, we have to know what notes to tune to, meaning what string is what note. Now to know that, we have to talk a little bit about something called the musical alphabet. The musical alphabet is actually very simple, because you probably already know it. It's the regular alphabet, only shortened from A to G. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Each one of those letters represent a musical note. Now, what happens when we get to G? Well, the pattern just repeats. We start at A again, and we go up to G again. Now, notice that I said up to G. That's because the pitch changes in that order. A is much lower than that G that we come to. But what happens when we jump back to that A again? Well, it is A again, only this time the difference is that it's higher in pitch. That's what we would call an octave. But don't worry too much about that. You just have to know in what order the notes are going and which one's higher or lower. So for example, you know that C is going to be one step higher than B, but also C is going to be one step lower than D. Now that we've looked at the musical alphabet, let's see how it relates to the strings of the guitar. Now when I'm going to be talking about the strings of the guitar, I'm going to refer to them in two ways. One is by the note, which the string is, and the other way is by the string number. Now, if you count it very carefully, you'll notice that we have one, two, three, four, five, six strings. So, we're going to refer to them also by names, string one, string two, string three, string four, five, and six. The key here is to remember which one is number one and which one is number six. And this is where it gets a little confusing, because on the guitar, we consider string one the bottom one. This one over here, the thinnest one, closest to the floor, closest to the ground. So, accordingly, this one, the thickest one, and closest to you, to your face, this string is number six. The reason for that is because we look at it in terms of pitch, not in terms of closeness to your face. And if you listen carefully, your string number one is much higher than the, oh, I can't even sing that low, this string. So remember, string one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now that we know both the musical alphabet and the string numbers, let me give you the notes of the strings. The first string, the thinnest one and highest in pitch, is going to be the E note. 
The second string is B. Third string is going to be G. Fourth one, D. Fifth one, A. And sixth one, E again. Now that we know all of this, and more specifically, we know which note to tune the string to, let's take a look at how to actually get the guitar in tune. The electronic tuner is going to go, usually has a clip on, so it's going to go right there on the headstock of the guitar. The reason for this is that it has to fit somewhere nicely on where it can pick up the vibrations from the guitar. So once it picks up the vibrations, it can tell what note it is and we can adjust it accordingly. What happens when you turn it on is the screen's going to light up and if you play a string, as you see, the letter name of the note is going to appear and also a small little indicator if we're too sharp or too flat. What I mean by sharp and flat is sharp is too high and flat is too low. Now let's pretend that my top first string, the E string, is out of tune even more than it was. <laughs> now what you're seeing here is that it's saying D and this little hashtag sign here, a student of mine a couple of days ago said, oh, what does that hashtag sign mean? Well, that's actually a sharp sign, which means that it's higher. A little note on that. If the letter has this hashtag or the sharp sign next to it, it means that it's one step higher than the actual letter. So A sharp, A hashtag, is one step higher than just simply A. Now that we know that, let's take a look at our D-sharp over here. Now D-sharp means that we're very close to E, because remember, A, B, C, D, E. E comes after D, so E is higher than D. So we have to turn the string up. Now when you see the needle went into the middle, and most other most tuners have different colors to signify this as well, that means we're in tune. The letter name is E, which is the note that we want, and it's in the middle. So we're in tune now. And you want to go through this process for every string. Make sure every string is in tune according to the note name. If you don't have an electronic clip-on tuner like this, what you can do is you can go on your phone or iPad and there's there's millions of apps out there right now uh, to tune your guitar, so just get one of them and try them out, see which one you like best. Great, now that we've talked about different parts of the guitar, how to hold the guitar, and also how to get the guitar in tune, it's time to play something. We're gonna start off with two very simple chords, the G and the C chord. And in fact, we're gonna start with a simplified version, so we can just, you know, in this first lesson, just get a feel for how it is to play the guitar, how it is to put our fingers down on the strings. To help us learn chords, we're going to be using chord diagrams. And um, in this week's handout, in this lesson's handout, you will find a nice explanation of how to read the chord diagrams. We will go over some of those points uh, in this video too, though. Also, at the very end of this handout, at the last page of the handout, you will find a full page of just quite a, quite a few guitar chords. Now. In the next couple of lessons, we will be taking a look at all of them. But if you're feeling particularly adventurous, go ahead and check them out whenever you want. Before we jump in with our left hand and where to put our fingers and all that stuff, let's talk a little bit about our right hand and how to play the guitar with our right hand. When it comes to your right hand, there's a couple of different things that you can do. First, let's take a look at how to play if you're using a pick. So what you want to do and this is just a general guideline. There's, there's, honestly, there's thousands of different ways how to hold a pick, and each player holds the pick a little differently. But just to get you started, let's try this out. Pull up your, curl up your index finger, just like this, and 
don't squeeze it too tight. Don't have it too loose either. Just, just like this. And put your pick sort of going there, pointing to the ground. Kind of, kind of like this. Um, don't worry if you're not getting it exactly like I am. It doesn't really matter. We'll adjust it uh, a little later. Once you have your pick on your index finger like this, on the side of your index finger, you can put your thumb down over the pick and sort of grab it between the side of your index finger and the pad of your thumb. Now, you don't want your thumb to be sticking out too much because that's going to lessen your control over the pick. But you also don't want to grab it like barely like this because then you don't really have a lot to hold on to. Just right there in the middle, nice and easy. Another note is that you really want to keep your fingers nice and relaxed so the pick can wobble around like this. Um, that way the pick can give way to the force of the strings and, and glide over, slide over the strings much more nicely and efficiently. Now, when you bring the pick to the guitar, you might notice that because of how you position the pick in your hands, that um, in your fingers, the pick might be pointing in weird angles, you know, to the left or, or like this to the right. Now, when that happens, you just want to keep your hand positioned like it is and adjust the pick so it's more or less pointing down into the sound hole. Now, what you want to do here is instead of really digging in the strings, you kind of want to go, you kind of want to slide over the strings. Not too light, you don't want it to be you don't want it to barely make a sound. You do want to be on the strings, but not too deep in. Just, just let it slide, let it glide over the strings. Let your hand fall down freely. And try, it, to play, try it out a couple of times, play around with it. Um, what happens when you dig in, so to say, too deep, um, you're gonna get a very hard and pinchy sound which sometimes musically might be what you want to go for, but more often than not, it's just going to annoy your listeners. Um, so you don't really, you, you don't really want to do something like, like this, really forcefully pushing through the strings. Just nice and easy, relax your hand, just glide over the strings. Remember, we talked also about the little wobble in the pick. That's going to make it easier to do that. As a beginner, the pick is the most probably efficient way to play the guitar. It gives you a gives you a nice single point, a very pointy point, and um, so it's easy to accurately just strum it and, and hit the right strings. However, if you choose not to use a pick, there's a couple of things that we can do just with our fingers. So let's take a look at those. First up, you can use your thumb. Now, when you're playing with your fingers like this, when you're strumming with your fingers like this, there's no correct way. Everybody does it a little differently. So essentially my best advice for you again is just to get in there, play around with it, experiment with it, and uh, see what works for you. But generally, if we're using our thumb, right? Um, when we're going down, we're gonna be mostly using this fleshy part over here. And when we're going up, we're gonna kind of like bend our thumb. We're not really kind of like pitch it in a going up direction so you don't want to go against the grain like this. That's not going to get you anywhere. So just uh, go along with the flow and obviously you're going to hit the strings with more of the nail part of the thumb. So strumming with the thumb would be something like... Now another thing that you can do with your fingers, how you can strum with your fingers is to imitate it, holding a pick, which is do the same motion that we did, bring your thumb to the index finger over here, only this time we don't have a pick. And what you do then is obviously you're going to be striking the strings going down with the nail part of your index finger, and when you're going up with the nail part of your thumb. What happens here, what might happen naturally, is that your other fingers might join in, in the strum. And, and that's completely all right. It just, you know, that's just another way to strum as well. And if your other fingers join in, you'll notice that you can still keep this pick-like figure. It's just that the strings will be first probably touched by your other fingers like this. Now, if you paid a lot of attention over there, you'll notice that 
my pick finger kind of broke away a little bit. So if that happens when you're strumming with all of your fingers, that's fine too. You can just You know, just play around and see what, what works for you. With your left hand, it's very important to understand how to read the chord diagram. Because we have to figure out where to put our fingers, right? So, if you'll notice, for example, the, the G chord diagram, we're going to take a look at the G chord now. Um, the G chord diagram has X's written above the 6th E and the 5th A string. Now, what those X's mean above the strings is that we're not going to be playing those open strings. What I mean by open strings is strings that are not uh, fretted, strings that are just being played just like this, just like they are openly. So we're ignoring the sixth and the fifth string. However, you'll notice that there's a circle above the fourth, third, and the second string, which means that those open strings we are going to play. So we're going to play the D string, the G string, and the B string. Now when we come to the first string in the G chord, you'll see that the circle has been moved from above the string to somewhere on the fretboard. And in this case, it's fret three. So that indicates where we're supposed to put our finger down. And in the circle, we have a small little number indicating which finger to use. For fingering numbers on our left hand, we're not using the thumb because our thumb is behind the neck. So we start the numbering from our index finger. So index finger is number one, middle finger is number two, uh, ring finger is number three, and your pinky is number four. So in the circle for the G chord on the first string, you'll see that we have number three written in. We're going to be using our ring finger over here. So what you want to do is you want to find the first string, which is right down here, and you want to find the third fret. So it's one, two, three. Now, first thing to remember is what we talked about when we talked about how to hold the guitar. Remember that curl, the naturally occurring curve in your fingers? Now, this is where it's going to play a key role because you want your fingers to go from top going down on the fretboard. As if, if the guitar was positioned like this, we want to go from top going down on the fretboard with our fingers. So we want to essentially play as much as we can on the tips of the fingers going down just like this. In terms of where to place our fingers on the fret, now you want to do that, you want to place your finger a little bit before the metal bar. So if we have frets one, two, three, this is our third fret, a little bit before the metal bar, not on it. If you're on it, the sound's gonna be very unclear because you're already entering next fret's territory. If you're too far behind, your sound might become buzzy and also not clear like this. So you want to hold it right before the metal bar to get a nice and clean sound. Now your fingers, the fingertips, might become a little sore and uh, tender over the next couple of days if you practice. That's completely okay. It takes a couple of weeks for um, your fingers to build up calluses and basically become stronger, the tiny muscles in the fingers to become stronger. So eventually it will be much easier for you to press down on the strings and also it won't feel as um, as sore on the tips of the fingers. Great, so now that we have talked about both our right hand and where to position our left hand with this G chord, let's put it all together. So we have our G chord, one, two, three, third fret, and we're gonna be playing from, as we talked, from the fourth open string, so from the fourth string. So let's count up, one, two, three, four. We're gonna be playing from this string, over here from the fourth D string, and we're gonna be strumming down. Just like this. Now that we've looked at the G chord, let's take a look at our second chord today, the C chord. So the key, C chord, the same process. So let's check out which strings are we supposed to play. You'll see that in the chord diagram, the X's indicate that we're not going to be playing the open sixth, open fifth, and open fourth string. So these three strings here are a no-no in this one, um, at least for now. However, 
on the open G string, above the open G string in the diagram, we have a circle, which means that we are going to be playing this open string. We also have a circle above the open E string, the high one, over here. So we are going to play this open string. On the second string, the B string, the circle is moved one fret down, on to, so to the first fret of the B string, and the number in the circle says one. So we're going to be using our first finger, our index finger, to play the C chord, to play that first fret on the second, second string. So again, going from top down, playing on our tips a little bit before the metal bar. And one, two, three, let's strum it. Nice. So that's our C chord. We have our G chord and our C chord. Great. We have pretty much covered all the basics that we need to know on how to play the guitar. We talked about the parts of the guitar. We talked about how to hold it, how to tune it. We also talked about how to position our right hand, how to sim do simple strums with it, and how to position and play with our left hand. And we also learned our first two chords, the G and the C chord. Now next lesson, we will be building up on this knowledge. We will take a look at a few new chords. We'll take a look at the full versions of the G and the C chord, and we'll also learn a new song. If you have any questions regarding any of the material covered in today's lesson, or anything music, anything guitar, anything at all, this Saturday on the Framingham Public Library YouTube page, we will be hosting a live Q&A so you can bring your questions to me. I will be there to answer them and just also just hang out with you guys. If you do have any questions in advance that you want me to cover in the Q&A, uh, there will be an email down in the description that you can use to email me and send any questions that you might have. Thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Richards and I'm a teacher at Century Music House. I've really enjoyed doing this lesson and I'm looking forward to doing the next couple of lessons and seeing you guys in the live Q&As. So, see you next week.